Hi, I'm Jesse Waters in for Bill O'Reilly, who's on assignment. We're broadcasting live from Houston at the set of the Super Bowl 51. Thanks for watching us tonight. Our top story, anarchy and violence erupting on college campuses as a force to bludgeon free speech. Last night at New York University, 11 people were arrested after protests turned violent. We will not sit back and allow Nazis to have a platform to feel comfortable in order to organize and mobilize towards our extermination. Do not forget me! Ten million students here! And I'm disgusted! I'm a professor! How dare you! How dare you! Protect me, oh Nazis! Wow. The protesters didn't want anti-PC comedian Gavin McGinnis to speak at a college Republican event. The chaos at NYU comes on the heels of the riot at Berkeley on Wednesday, where protesters tried to silence conservative activist Emilio Yiannopoulos. Liberals so far have been at a loss to explain the point behind these protests, with some dabbling in conspiracy theories. Those people were not Berkeley students. Those were outsiders, agitators. Uh, they, I've never seen them before. Uh, for you know, there's rumors that they actually were right wingers. They were part of a kind of a group that were organized and ready to create the kind of tumult and danger you saw that forced the police to cancel the event. To be clear, there is absolutely no evidence that right wing groups were behind the Berkeley riot. President Donald Trump weighed in on the protest today, tweeting, quote, professional anarchists, thugs, and paid protesters are proving the point of the millions of people who voted to make America great again, unquote. Joining us now from Los Angeles, Leo Terrell, a civil rights attorney, and from Boston, Adriana Cohen, a columnist with the Boston Herald. So, Leo, I'll begin with you. It's my opinion that liberals on college campuses now resemble Islamist mobs, where they riot over rhetoric. You remember in Iraq and Afghanistan, whenever there was a, a, an affront to Islam or Islam was challenged, they'd burn the flag and they'd riot and break things. Now, on the left, on college campuses, when liberalism is perceived to be under attack, they riot, they burn things, and they hurl expletives and cause complete chaos. Isn't that just childish? Uh, no, and Jesse, I'm a little surprised. You know, when you look at a school like Berkeley, which represents the brightest and the best of American college students, these are people who are expressing a disappointment with extreme views on the right. And even people on the right disagree with some of the views that are being put out by the Breitbart editor. My point is simply this. This is a voting block that we're talking about. These are people at Berkeley that are going to be voting in the midterm election, and they cannot be ignored. They're not the protest, professional protesters that you want to characterize them. These are students well, well, Leo, you said who one thing. The viewpoint. Yes. Leo, you said that they're expressing okay. disappointment. Now, when I express disappointment, maybe I shrug my shoulders or I complain a little bit. I don't throw things through windows of private property. And another thing, I don't know if all these people are going to be voting because the other mob that came out after the election that was rioting and protesting and burning things on the West Coast, half of them never even voted in the general. So I, I don't see these well, people as uh, engaged voters. I just see them as rabble rousers. Adriana, you, you would have to admit that the more the left goes crazy like this, that Donald Trump comes out looking reasonable and mature. Yeah, absolutely, because um, we know that mo the, all of uh, Donald Trump's supporters, um, you know, value the Constitution and our right to free speech. And we see our, our basic civil liberties, our right to free speech being trampled on on college campuses all across this country. And it's so dangerous. And we've been seeing this trend for over 10 years now, but now it's actually gotten so violent. I mean, if you look at the riots that took place at Berkeley, there was $100,000 worth of damage and windows smashed, things to on fire. These these are criminals. Uh, some would even go as yeah. far as saying these aren't particularly yeah. voters. Oh, they're on. political wait, wait terrorists. Wait. Okay, we're, ahead, we're, let's, let's draw a distinction between let's draw a distinction between uh, criminals and students, people expressing their First Amendment right. I am not going to condone the violence, but you're not going to sit there and broad stroke that everyone who are protesting against Donald Trump, they're wrong. Everybody who supports Donald Trump is right. That's a tremendous broad stroke, stroking, well, no, and I think no, you're, you should, you're disingenuous in that position. 
It's very wrong. No, no, not at all. Look, I support peaceful protest. That's allowed per the Constitution. But when you um, vandalize a building, that's a criminal act. So you are, they're, they're, you're going to be charged with criminal charges. Uh, arson is a criminal charge. So these are not peaceful uh, protesters. These are thugs and criminals who belong in yeah, jail. Leo. And they should so, also so, yeah, pay for their let damages. Me, let me, the $100,000 well, in here. damages. Leo, <laughs> let me just say something. It's very hard to come out as a leftist and say that Trump is this rude guy who's prone to violence and then act yourself rude and engage in violence during the protests. It doesn't serve your interests. Jesse, let, 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 me, let me just let me, let, let look at the broad stroke that you and Andrea is pointing out. First of all, college campuses, all liberals. Well, you know what? It's funny. Your Fox colleague, Greg Gutfeld, came from Berkeley as well. And my point is simply this that nothing, the, the argument of these college campuses and these youth expressing a viewpoint, what is wrong with that? Trump has to worry about a blowback at the midterm Wait a election. Second. You know what's because wrong with it when you're throwing things through buildings and you're lighting things on I'm fire. I'm not going to condone the if violence. If I was a citizen I'm not in Berkeley and my store got crashed into by some radical, I'd be pretty angry. And politics is about persuasion. I don't think people are persuading well, no. other people if they're holding up airport lines at JFK or LAX or torching someone's limousine like they did in the D.C. inauguration. That's not necessarily getting people to come to your side. That, that is, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend that. That's the misdirection of this argument. The argument is very simple. Civil disobedience has been part of this country's history. And more importantly, people are expressing, Jesse and Andrea, an outrage at the extreme arguments that Trump supporters are using. Trump is providing cover for the extreme right. And the extreme right is under his umbrella. And that is what these no. protesters are articulating. Uh, listen, if yes, I, they if, are. No. Uh, the only extreme I see is on the left, because they've been responsible for almost oh, every act Jesse. of violence since the Did election. You just said? Last word, Adriana. Last word, Adriana. Yeah, a absolutely. I mean, um, what's happening here is the left is, is censoring conservative speech. I mean, Leo, you can't defend that. Our, our rights are being violated. I mean, these speakers are being, um, you know, shut out. They're not able to express their First Amendment rights. I mean, you know that that's wrong.